Hi everyone, welcome to this session of the Tiger Academy. Why do technical indicators make investing more effective? In the previous lesson, by assessing which industries have good future prospects for growth and by finding good companies at a good share price within those industries, you learned more about how to select stocks. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about three classic technical indicators. Mastering these technical indicators will make your stock trading more effective. Let's keep the treasure hunter analogy in mind. If you come down to the trading floor and observe the crowd for a period of time, you'll notice two interesting things. First, the purchase price of gold fluctuates all the time, and prices may vary greatly at different trading hours. Secondly, not only can you trade gold in the market, but you can also trade on other precious stones. It turns out that not everyone knows how to find gold, and in order to get more people involved, the market also offers stones to trade on. This type of trading is very volatile and risky. The stones themselves are very cheap, but if gold is found in them, you can earn a return on your money many times over. On the contrary, it can be all that comes out of flying with a pickaxe is worthless broken stones. Whether trading gold or precious stones, markets can be volatile. You shall carefully and wisely choose your area for your stock trading. How can you sell your stocks? Or in this instance, your gold at a better price? Let me help you find out through the use of technical indicators. Generally, stock prices deviates from the intrinsic value and stock can be deemed as overpriced or underpriced. Technical line indicators can well reflect the real-time fluctuations of stock prices. Using technical indicators will allow you to trade more efficiently in the stock market and help you make an investment decision. What is a K-line? How do you read a K-line? On the Tiger Trade app, you can see a candlestick chart that looks like this. Enlarge the chart. The individual green and red icons that you see are called candlesticks, and the line that they form is sometimes called a K-line. A candlestick is made up of three parts, the real body, the upper shadow, and the lower shadow. The body of the candle is the part between the opening and closing prices. The upper shadow is the part above the body, i.e. the thin line above the body, and the lower shadow is the part below the body, i.e. the thin line below the body. So how do we draw a K-line? This requires knowing four basic pieces of information, the opening price, the closing price, the high price, and the low price for the period you're watching. The term opening price refers to the price of the first transaction of a certain investment subject at the opening of the stock exchange on a particular trading day. Closing price refers to the last transaction price of an investment subject at the close at a day's trading activities on the stock exchange. The high price is the highest price on an investment target in trading from the opening to the closing of a particular trading day. The low price is the lowest price of an investment target in trading from the opening to the closing of a particular trading day. Three classic technical indicators, MA, KDJ, and MACD. Understanding K-line charts is a basic skill in stock trading. Many common technical line indicators can also be used in conjunction with K-line charting. In general, they can be divided into three categories. The first category is trend technical indicators. The most common examples of these are moving averages and Belinger bands. Technical trend indicators are the most basic indicators and can help you try to determine the future trend of an investment target. Let's take a closer look at the most common moving average indicators. Enter the quotation screen in the Tiger Trade app, click Setting, and then click Indicator. Find Major Chart Indicators and select MA. When you do this, you'll see several curvy lines of different colors appear on the chart. These are called moving averages. The concept of moving average was created by R. H. Hooker, an English civil servant and statistician. The use of moving averages to predict the direction of stock prices so as to provide a basis for making more sound investment decisions was popularized in the 1960s by Joseph E. Granville, a popular American investment expert. The formula for calculating a simple moving average is n minus day moving averages equals sum of n day closing prices divided by n. According to the different values of n, 
we can generally calculate an average line of 5, 10, 20, 30, 60, 120, and 240 days, which represent the short-term, medium-term, and long-term trends respectively. After understanding the principle of moving average, how do we use it? You should know that one of the main uses of moving average indicators is to, at a glance, help you determine the trend of share prices and the timing of buying and selling. For example, on the current trading day, if the closing price of a stock is higher than its average price of the past 10 days, it is likely that the stock price will rise in the future. If it is lower than the 10-day average price, it is likely to fall. Looking at an actual chart, you can see that if the closing price of the stock breaks out above the 10-day moving average price, it can be deemed as a buy signal. If the closing price falls down below the 10-day moving average price, it can be deemed as a sell signal. This kind of trading strategy, which only looks at one moving average period, is called a single moving average strategy. There's also a double moving average strategy, which I'll explain later in the technical indicators course. In the table below, I have listed some common moving average strategies for your reference. Let's talk about the second type of technical stock indicators, KDJ, RSI, and BIAS, among others. The essence of these indicators is the measure whether stocks are overbought or oversold. They do have different calculation formulas and different names when, in fact, they are much the same and their effects will not be much different. I'll focus mainly on the KDJ indicators for now. The KDJ indicator, also known as the stochastic oscillator, is used to measure the degree of deviation of stock prices from normal levels. First, looking at the image below, you'll see in the upper portion is the K-line chart, and below that is the KDJ curve, which is composed of three lines. The KDJ index is composed of a K value, a D value, and a J value, which are calculated from the highest daily price, the lowest daily price, and the daily closing price. The specific calculation formula is complicated and you only need to understand the meaning and usage of these three values. The KDJ indicator is very sensitive and swings up and down as the stock price changes. We can determine whether the stock price is deviating from its normal range by the size of the swing. If the swing is large, it means that the stock price is deviating excessively from its normal range and this may be an indication of a trend reversal, which will produce buy and sell signals. I've listed here the common value ranges of the KDJ index for your reference. Having introduced the KD index, now let's look at the third technical indicator, MACD. The full name of the MACD indicator is the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. It's an important indicator reflecting the trend of stock prices. Below is the MACD graph for a stock. MACD consists of four parts, DIF value, DEA value, MACD value, and zero axis. The red line in the figure is the DIF value. It is the difference between the 12-day short-term moving average and the 26-day long-term moving average. Because the DIF value is more sensitive to change, it's called the fast line. The blue line in the figure is the DEA value. It's the nine-day moving average of the DIF value. Because of its slow change, it's also known as the slow line. It should be noted that the period for calculating a moving average is not fixed. The 12, 26, and nine days used here are the most commonly used values. Just a heads up, you can change these values in the Tiger Trade app. The red and green columns in the graph are called MACD values, which represents the difference between the DIF value and the DEA value. If the MACD value is greater than zero, it is a green column, indicating that the DIF value is greater than the DEA value at the moment. Conversely, the red column indicates that the DIF value is less than the DEA value at the moment. The essence of the MACD is to illustrate the separation between the DIF value and the DEA value. So how should we use the MACD indicator? Let me show you a few common ways. First, let's look at the crossing of the two lines. The DIF value here is crossing the DEA value from bottom to top, forming what is called a golden cross. When this happens, the column changes from red to green. When the DIF value crosses the DEA value from top to bottom, forming a death cross, the color of the column changes from green to red. In general, 
A golden cross indicates slowing declines and is a buy signal. A death cross indicates a slowing rise and is a sell signal. Second, combine the golden cross and the death cross with the zero axis to find stronger buy and sell signals. If the cross occurs below the zero axis, it is called a sub-zero golden cross, indicating a slowdown and a possible rebound. If a death cross occurs above the zero axis, it's called a zero death cross, indicating a slowing rise and a possible pullback. If a golden cross occurs above the zero axis, it is called a zero golden cross and indicates a strengthening uptrend. If a death cross occurs below the zero axis, it's called a sub-zero death cross and it indicates a strengthening downtrend. The golden cross and the death cross are the most commonly used MACD trading signals for beginners. In the figure below, I have listed the meanings of the common patterns of the MACD indicator for your reference. Well, that's our introduction to the commonly used technical line indicators. The skilled use of these indicators will allow you to obtain better prices and make more successful trades. Risks of using technical indicators. It should also be emphasized here that although technical trading is a common approach in the stock market, it also has its obvious shortcomings. Because the drawing of technical lines uses historical data, the trading signals indicated are generally lagging signal. It should be noted that the past performance cannot always be counted on as a prediction for future performance. In addition, traders with significant capital or holdings may be able to manipulate the technical indicators to induce retail investors who relies on the trading signals indicated to enter the market. It can be said that in this way, they're able to predict your predictions and out-trade you. So, technical indicators should only be used as a means to assist your decision making. Trading based only on technical indicators is a very risky thing to do, so you should be careful. With that said, that's the end of today's class. Let's summarize what you've learned today. What is a K-line? How do you read a K-line? Three classic technical indicators, MA, KDJ, and MACD. Risks of using technical indicators. Having now learned about technical indicators, you should have more confidence in being able to read the market. After you've gained more experiences, some of those hidden gems might start to look good to you. I'll see you next time.